Isro Part 3 As a baby learns to walk, she will fall but will get up and move and this process will repeat until success is achieved. Likewise, Isro achieved its success through its falls. In this video, let's talk about how its failures led Isro to become the world's recognized organization that it is today. Guys, let's see another chapter in the history of Isro. Isro began its journey by testing rockets with small sounding rockets before moving on to more powerful rockets. In short, Isro has gradually boosted the rocket's power. It is this power that determines the distance up to which satellites can be deployed in orbit. Let's discuss this in detail. Orbits The orbit which is closest to the Earth is the low Earth orbit and ranges from 160 km to 2000 km. Medium Earth orbit is between 2000 to roughly 36,000 km from Earth and geosynchronous orbit is above 36,000 km. Initially, ISRO tested and launched sounding rockets that were used to study Earth's atmosphere from low Earth orbit and could carry a payload of 8 to 100 kg and could go up to a maximum height of 475 km. Then, the satellite launch vehicle was put to the test. They could launch a satellite weighing up to 40 kg at an altitude of 400 km using a four-phase solid propellant. Hence, they could send satellites as far as the low Earth orbit. These SLVs were the first milestones in India's future programs that resulted in rockets that could launch large satellites into orbit. The SLV project was not only the start of larger rocket development, but it also served as the foundation for Indian ballistic missile program. Kalam, who was the director of the SLV development, then joined the DRDO to work on ballistic missiles. In addition, it may be said that ISRO's transfer of technology is the element behind India's missile advancement. Later, as we all know, Dr. Kalam was named as the Missile Man. ASLV The ASLVs are the SLVs with strapper rockets attached to them. The goal was to increase the capability of carrying more payloads. The ASLV could carry a satellite weighing up to 150 kg into a 400 km orbit. In 1987, the augmented satellite launch vehicle was tested for the first time. However, two ASLV failures in a row had put scientists under pressure. In both launches, the rockets were destroyed within 50 seconds of takeoff. Scientists were puzzled by the failure of these two solid fuel reactors with a total of five stages. ISRO scientists held discussions with professors in various divisions and aerospace industry. Some people took this fall as an opportunity to criticize ISRO. There were also a few funny instances among these criticisms. For instance, a critic, an aeronautical engineering professor from a university in northern India, stated that according to his calculations, there was a gravitational fault in Sri Harikota and that it was impossible to place a satellite into orbit from there. Rather than discussing it with his officials, he announced his discovery during a press conference. He also suggested that instead of draining the country's funds, ISRO should find more suitable locations to relocate. However, when ISRO officials met him, he had to accept that his estimates were incorrect. Later, our scientists fixed the problems and successfully launched the ASLV. Surprisingly, the professor now told the media that it was his solution that helped ISRO. At present, all Indian launches are from Sri Harikota. 
Even the Chandrayaan and Mangalyaan explorations were launched from there. PSLV However, the SLV and ASLV were merely stepping stones to PSLV. ISRO wanted to develop rocket technology that could carry a payload of at least 1000 kilograms. PSLV allows you to do this and can be used to launch satellites into Earth's polar orbit. The satellites in this orbit travel over the north and south poles of the Earth. At present, there are at least 13 Indian remote sensor satellites in orbit, including IRS, INSAT, RISAT and CARTOSAT. Natural Resource Monitoring, Ocean Atmosphere Studies and Land Surveillance are some purposes of the remote sensing satellites. These were delivered to orbit using PSLV. PSLV was launched for the first time on September 20, 1993. The aim was to launch the IRS-1A remote sensing satellite, which weighed around 850 kilograms, into polar orbit. The PSLV's first mission, which was meant to be a success, was over midway due to a bug in the onboard computer software. The second PSLV was launched successfully the following year. It became a lucky omen for Dr. Kasturi Langan, the newly elected ISRO chairman. Since then, the ISRO hasn't had to look back. Since then, only two of the approximately 48 launches have failed. Dr. G. Madhavan Nair was the project director of PSLV who eventually became the chairman of ISRO. PSLV's current payload capacity is 3800 kg in low Earth orbit and 1200 kg in geosynchronous or geostationary transfer orbit. It was PSLV that made India's Chandrayaan-1 and Mangalyaan's mission possible. On February 15, 2017, PSLV C-37 successfully launched 104 satellites into orbit, including one for the United States. This was a world record back then. Conclusion When many of the rockets that ISRO first launched failed and crashed into the sea, several people scorned at our rocket technology. But all of these setbacks were just teething problems. PSLV successfully completed ISRO's Chandrayaan-1 mission in 2009 and serves our nation. As ISRO enters the next phase of space technology with its second lunar mission, it will be assisted by GSLV, which is based on cryogenic technology. We'll take a look at this in the next video. Jai Hind!